nothing like coffee in the morning. Coffee's yucky. What was I saying now? Oh. So, not continuing Braille Dragon just yet. Yeah, because, you know, I started, that was my first project. And I told you that, right? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> and it was such a monumental task taking that on as a first debut novel. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge. So I was like, you know, and I, at the time I was also working on Wolfgang, so I just, I was like, you know what, this is easier. I kind of like in the first person. I, it, it really just kind of flows out of me, so. Like, to me, Girl Dragon is like the equivalent to Game of Thrones books. Well, I wouldn't say Game of Thrones. No, I mean, not, you know, but I mean, like, it's going to be. Oh, you mean thickness? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it'll I mean, be it's long gonna be for sure. Like a... Epic for sure. I mean, it's epic fantasy. Yeah. But. What got you into Girl Dragon? Like, these are to- totally different genres. But, I mean. Yeah. Right? Uh, Wolfgang being horror epic fantasy mm-hmm. versus. Epic fantasy? Versus <laughs> fantasy elves epic epicness, <laughs> Lord of the Rings epicness. <laughs> well, I've always, I've always obviously been a huge fan of fantasy dragons, elves, dwarves, all those fun things, knights, swords, armor, battles, mythical creatures. Yeah, I, I couldn't dragons. tell with the Wait, weapons. Wait, did I say dragons? I couldn't tell with the weapons we have on our wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the medieval weapons. And what then, got me into it? Well, that started when I was a kid. Yeah. When I was, like, in middle school. What got you into switching it up into the horror part? College. Because when I, w- when I started going to college and I was, like, seeing all these different... <clears throat> I took some... I took this one course, actually, that was... Was called, like... Literature of the Supernatural. I think that's what it was called. And it was taught by this teacher, this professor called Professor... Professor... Um, bless his heart, I can't remember his name. <laughs> but he's dead now. Oh. But I got one of his sacred, like, original books that he used to teach from, from oh. in the class. Like, I got it. Because it, he, when, he, when he passed, it was donated to the shelves of the college. And then... We were, and I was in a writing co- course while attending there. And the teacher at one night was like, Hey, let's all take a little, let's all take a little, uh, a little walk. So we just went like into like the main halls of the one literature building. And she's like, We got all these books here we need to get rid of. You can pick one and take it with you. Doesn't matter what it is. So everybody's like, Oh, really? Cool. So I'll start walking around, checking out, scrolling through the shelves. And I see this book, and it says tales of horror and the supernatural and blah, blah, blah. And it's like a sh- collection of short stories. And I'm like, wait a second. So I pull it off the shelf, and it's like in this old binding. It's all taped up and half destroyed. And I start flipping through, and it's like old dingy yellow pages. And I'm like reading it, and it's got it's got writings in it, highlights, all kinds of stuff. And I'm like reading all what short stories are in there. And it's all these stories from the class I took, taken with the, with, the, with the guy who died, the professor that died. I was like, so I go up to my teacher. I'm like, can I take this book? She's like, oh, that's a special book. He'd probably want you to have that. She <laughs> says to me like that. And I go, score. <laughs> so, you know, and I've, I mean, that kind of stuff, like H.P. Lovecraft, mm-hmm. love that. Um... Dracula, obviously. And I've always loved those stories and vampire stories. And and vampires are even in the fantasy stuff that I've written, too. But not to the extent of where it's the focal point. Yeah. So that's why I did Wolfgang. It was kind of more of an experiment way back years ago. And I in the class... Thank you. Here you are. Thank you. 
getting your Starbucks? Oh, for your mom. Yeah, for me. Drink this poison. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, experimental horror action. That, that was my whole plan or my idea was to, because uh, at the times also I was reading Hunger Games during that time. That when you got that book? When I started writing Wolf King. Oh, okay. It actually, it actually stemmed from a short story that I did for the class and the class really took to it. So I was like, you know what, maybe I'll, maybe I'll write a full length novel about this and so I started from the short story I started doing little bits of chapters here and there and I was like oh, this is actually turning into something and I went from there and when did you start writing Wolfgang? Uh, years ago was, uh, the, well the second one I'm writing now Inquisition has taken me three years so five years before that so it literally, I don't know, it's a while ago. But the main idea of the characters didn't start coming and formulating until later on. Like the shell of the story was forming. Okay. And I needed, I needed to, to somehow integrate characters from real life into the story. And, uh, and unfortunately, you were one of the victims of that. Why unfortunately? Since I die, it's not bad. Thanks, Nugget. Uh, <laughs> Kill me. Yeah. Anyway, so... Why did you choose me as one of your characters? Because uh, I just... I did. I just felt, just felt that it was, it was time for you to die. So I chose you. <laughs> so you're the perfect fit for Wolf King's wife, you know. Just gets bit, but see, you're also his inspiration throughout the story, you know. You're what gives, gives him the character strength, you know. So it was, it was a good fit. Of course, you know, persona, dark hair, dark eyes, all that grand stuff. So, so going back to the Hunger Games thing and, and the road, you remember the road? You read the road. I made yeah, you yeah. read the road. You made me read the road. By, by Cormac McCarthy. Mm-hmm. And, ah, oh, I love that book, man. The road is awesome. Like, if I were to recommend anybody reading any book, like if they'd never read a book ever before, and they really want a, a, a tale of of true hero, heroism and <clears throat> and struggle and survival and and sad but good times as well. The road, man, because that's just a survival story. And, and the style that he wrote that in was just totally experimental, awesome. It worked, and I wanted to do something. Some similar like that, experimental, where nobody's done a survival vampire horror story where you're getting it all through the hunter's eyes and it's not done in a journal style because that's what Dracula is. It's not done in a third person like Van Helsing or, or these other stories like Vampire Hunter D things like that it's all told in third person so I'm like you know what Hunger Games I really like it's first person action you really feel what Katniss goes through and I'm like you know what let me combine the two so I that's what I did I, I wrote a horror story an action horror story in the first person like it would be Hunger Games survival moving from one thing to the next and, and fast pace, you know, no stopping, no breaking. You know, you want to be tired when you're done reading it. You know, that was the whole intention behind writing Wolfgang. And and it is, and it's gonna be not the, entirely the same in Inquisition, but you 
you still get that fast pace, but I do slow it down a little bit because it, Inquisition is more of a developmental book of the Wolfgang character. Yeah. So, like, the first Wolfgang book, book one, is more of like an introduction of Wolfgang. This is what you're getting from this story. This is what you're going to take away. Strife, struggle, action, running, dodging, killing, blood, guts, all that stuff. In the second book, it's going to slow down a little bit because now he knows his goal, but his goal is just beyond his reach. And he's still chasing after it. But as all things, conflict comes into play and obstacles. So it gives, it gives him time to really develop into something stronger because he realizes at the end of book one that he's not as strong as he thought he was. So now what's he going to do? to combat that you know he's got a long journey ahead of him yeah well we'll be continuing this another day yeah then we get to go move yay moving my favorite thank you guys for listening